Hey fellas, what's up? It's been a while since I've made a base for you guys, and this one's a real filthy one, so I'm just gonna get right into it for ya. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this base in particular. So you'll see here I have a huge amount of effects going on here and in instead of recreating this sound from scratch like I normally do in my videos. I'm going to just kind of talk piece by piece how I made this sound and then I'm throwing it up on my Patreon so if you want to kind of skip this whole process then you can just download that and the rack and mess around with it as you want. That's totally fine. Lately I've just been kind of learning all my options and setting up situations and ways for me to kind of mess with things on the fly and therefore have tons of ways to improve it, and that's really what I'm going to talk about more than just showing you how to make a single sound, is showing you how to make a bunch of different sounds. So turning everything off, you'll hear this sound instead. Which is actually kind of a cool sound, um, not going to lie. Let's go ahead and flip everything off. This is your typical, we got Bottle Blow, Addy Funk, and you'll see I'm doing an FM from B. This is up one octave. Uh, the randomization's off on both of them. I have all these different LFOs that changed over time. This one right here is tied to the master tuner. And that just kind of makes me... Rhythm sounds, they move a lot. So you want to be able to have control over the pitch. You can even throw it on the macro knob and mess with it that way. Uh, I get a little bit of width here and turn off the randomization so that I can... I also turn this mode on exponential to kind of get rid of the phasiness. And the big filters here that you're going to see me use are all from the flanges. I don't know if that's how you say it, but the, these right here are your bread and butter for making rhythm sounds. And that's why I prefer Serum over Vital for making these sounds. You can make some cool rhythm sounds in Vital, I'm sure. I just find it easier to turn these filters on and... Yeah, that's sick. So what's funny though is almost immediately you're going to see me shape the sound and kind of get rid of a lot of that phasiness, but I'm going to be using multiple filters. So this phase filter also kind of makes more of that vocal noise that we're looking for. And then of course, just compressing the crap out of it. And then I always increase the release in, with my basses because it just kind of cleans it up and shortens it a bit. The tail, I, I get tail a different way. I don't want my compressor to be lengthening my bass. I, I like to kind of keep it tight. Um, uh, tube distortion it's just kind of, you know, beefs it up a little bit. And then you'll see me using the flanger, the phaser, and the chorus a lot because these just give you tons of ways to mix it up and add more of that spectral morphing that we're really looking for in our bases. So the first effect that I use is Serum FX, and I have a video that talks about it in FL Studio, how to use it um, and where to get it from. And to use it in Ableton, where you're able to use the audio in and use this filter, all you got to do is make a MIDI channel and have it route to this base and make sure that it's on Serum FX here and that allows you to, to you know use it to to have another filter and i'm going to turn everything off real quick uh, again i used another phase filter this i moved down because it just cleaned up the base a bit and here distortion driving it, flanger, adding more character, finding different depths can go a long way to, to beefing up and making a sound better. Now delay, 
it's really cool for rhythm basses. And what I do is I turn down the mix a bit, I turn off BPM, I link it, and then I mess around with this, this parameter here. And that just adds this cool tail for this specific sound. I went with a higher amount than I normally would. Usually I'm like... It almost adds that homey feel to it. And then I throw on a comb filter with some drive, resonance. I recommend a comb filter, even if you're using it just to automate at times to change up your sound. Um, you can... You can get a lot of cool different variations to your sound in order to have a whole suite of rhythm basses. I really recommend the comb filter. But coming out of Serum Effects, you're going to notice at this point the sound is very muffled. And I really drive things forward with a lot of uh, distortion. You know, I put 8 decibels right here. And then the first plugin that I use that is external and does cost money is Isotope Trash. If you don't have it, that's okay. It's not necessary because you can still make a ton of cool sounds without it. But I use it to do a little bit of convolve um using the body right here the body section with intimate and a very very low mix in order to kind of sprinkle on a little bit of character it kind of brought out a little deepness out of the bass that kind of helped and i really like this radio contact under the faulty again messing with the drive and uh, turning the mix down a little bit in order to kind of get a cool effect <laughs> It just, it just made it sound a little bit better, in my opinion, um, for this particular sound. Again, you don't need it. Um, multiband, I guess I just felt the bass was a little bit too much. Oftentimes, I'll be getting rid of bass because I have this sub right here, which I'll leave a link in the description to show how I made it. Essentially, EQ, I even though I'll put it on, I tend to mess with it a bit, add more stuff, then come back and mess with it some more after I've introduced different things and there's no right way to EQ. It's just, does it sound better? Usually I add a bit of brightness. Getting the highs back after getting rid of them with the first serum effects is kind of part of the challenge. And that's why I usually also throw an OTT on, increase the highs a bit and bring the depth down to 20%. Way too much, but again, dialing it back. And that's a theme you're gonna see a lot is me dialing back effects that I put on because I feel that a little goes a long way. Now, the second effect chain that I use that I pay for by doing the $15 a month kilohertz subscription, which I recommend, is the Snap Heap. But I'm not doing anything in it that you essentially need. Again, it's just flavor for the bass. It's a sweeping notch, which again, you can do that anywhere. Uh, a format filter, which does brings it out a little bit but again not essential for the bass and then bit crush which you can do in serum effects if you need to i just like the kilohertz one just adds a little bit of a ring to it and again the mix is really low really sprinkled in there and then i have these two serum effects and what they do is they essentially are being used only for this flanger filter and I have the mix automated to just, I'm not even using the compressor, I don't even know why it's on, but it's to just add flavor throughout the song by give that cool reverb and change in timbre. Um, you can put any sort of filters anywhere and you can do this a million times and I recommend it for rhythm basses. It really helps to improve your drop. Rhythm basses sound good when they're changing and they're doing cool things and almost like they're alive. And just having tons of cool parameters that you can mess with does that. Speaking of, I have an EQ that's essentially doing that and it's it's just to create this little intro. Kind of brings that context, you know, small, big, and helps kind of introduce the drop. Um, another EQ just to bring out or just to cut some of the lows and boost the like mid high area. And then essentially I'm just taking erosion and using that to bring out brightness. And this was recommended to me by uh, one of my viewers in a recent live stream. And I was trying to find ways to add brightness and <laughs> 
again, adds more ring and it's okay to have your sound sound a little messy when there's tons of symbols and other things going on. It, it allows you to kind of have a little bit more liberty when adding texture. So don't be too worried if the sound isn't super clean because once you add everything else, it's gonna fit in a lot better. Then I have my side chain, which I won't really talk about too much. Um, a utility, which I control the, vo the final volume with and then mono some of the bass. Uh, anything that kind of leaks through. And then a small reverb, which I automate at times for the dry wet. And that's really it. That's And what's cool about this is you can mess with the wavetables, you can mess with the flanger filter, the phaser, you can add a chorus, you can go through and add different serum effects and essentially create tons of different bases. That's how I made this, uh, this first bass right here. <laughs> You know, I, have, I used a convolver on this one and threw in a random, like, metal sample and found something that changed the timbre in a way that I really like. So, yeah, I'm going to throw this up on Patreon uh, with the rack so you can experiment with it. But really, I recommend you just kind of take a lot of what I showed you today and just mess around and make your own bases because I really, that's that's the, the best feeling is when you make something cool on your own, you know what I mean? But yeah, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Glad to be back. Glad to be showing you guys some bases. Peace.